Hello everybody, thank you so much for tuning in here in Just Be Blessed. We go live here on Facebook every week, bringing, uh, sharing people's testimonies and uplifting messages and how God is good. And let me tell you, tonight I have a, a very special brother, a very special person, the brother Stephen Lee is here, here in Just Be Blessed, sharing his testimony and we're gonna find out more about you know, his life, growing up, and how God changed his life. I mean, seriously. Thank you so much. And do my favor, please, share this link. Because I'm sure uh, some people, they're right now, you know, in their, in their phones or in social media. Please share this link so other people can, when they hear the story of Brother Stephen Lee, testimony is going to be a huge blessing in their lives. Thank you so much, and let's welcome brother Stephen Lee here in Just Be Blessed. Hello, brother Stephen. Thanks so much for being here in Just Be Blessed. How's it going? Doing well. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me here. Um, I am blessed to be here. <laughs> so <laughs> Great, great. And let me tell you, I mean, here is live, bro. I mean, seriously, it's not like catting or anything. I know you're working <laughs> or familiar with production and stuff like that, but here is a is, is we're going live bro i mean you know let, let's let's have a good time and and it's casual you know here's just casual and, and thank you so much because i know we were talking uh uh maybe it was last year i remember it was uh, uh a few months back uh you share your testimony and you know live busy and i was living in oregon now living here in tennessee but uh god is good right he has been amazing, amazing. I can't say enough how, how good he has been. Mm. And we, we're going to be talking about, I mean, when I, when I saw, uh, you know, your description, the, you know, the title and everything, I mean, wow. I mean, the Olympics and, and something happened and, and I want to find out every detail if you let me. <laughs> so <laughs> in the beginning, uh, please tell us, uh, uh, how was growing up? I mean, do you grow up in the Christian home? Do you grow up? Uh, I mean, you're Asian. Uh, uh, how was, I don't know what kind of religion it was. Uh, please share with us. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, I am uh, born South Korean. Okay. And I was born in South Korea. So mm. I read, write, speak South Korean. And, um, I have to say there came to a point in my life where I felt life is really meaningless. Mm. Uh, I think this was in my teenage years um, that there is nothing worth living for. And so why should I even try? What, why should I try? And, and especially when you look at life, maybe I was too young to, um, you know, really say, but mm -hmm. I saw people's misery, especially our family uh, being an immigrant and I didn't have a father. Um, coming into the country, my mom left uh, me and my sister in the country uh, to take care of some things back in Korea. Mm -hmm. And so I lived with my um, aunt, who was a stranger to me for two years, uh, mm -hmm. with a bunch of other children. And I was the oldest, so I had to take care of them in some sense. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know what was going on. Mm -hmm. So it, it really... Uh, and then at the same time, my mom came back after two years and she said she's divorced with my dad. So I didn't really get to even say bye mm, to him. Interesting. But at the same time, I, you know, I am trying to get used to mm -hmm. America, yeah. um, get used to English, speaking mm. English. And um, so many things were piled on top that mm. um, I guess I was trying to just get some gasp of fresh air, like some, some some direction where what I want to do, what I want to do in life. And mm -hmm. that's when um, that whole gold medal Olympic mm -hmm. came into my, my life. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so, I mean, you were saying that, I mean, you were immigrant. So how old you, you were when, when you were here in the in United States, when you came to the United States? When I was 10. 10 years old. Okay. I was I was twenty when I was yeah. when I came to the United States. <laughs> oh wow! Okay, yeah. mm. so you're you're definitely more more older, and, yeah. and that's it, why it you is hear a little beautiful accent. Easier when you're young. <laughs> 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 wow! Yeah. I have an 
accent too. So a <laughs> uh, lot of times people can't tell if it is Korean accent or some other accent I made up, but I, I don't, I don't <laughs> even know what accent it is anymore. Uh, oh, okay. This is live guys. I mean, we have a good time here and just be blessed, right? <laughs> Please. Yeah, so, uh, so how was the tradition? I mean, you know, you came here and, and I'm sure it was uh, some, uh, some difficulties. I mean, I don't know. I mean, the language barrier. I mean, right. friendship, you know, kind of like you want to become friends. I mean, this guy, I mean, I don't know. You want to share with us? I mean, it was kind of difficult. Yeah. It, or it, it was de definitely difficult. I mm. had trouble fitting in at first. I... For the life of me, I did not understand why people were showing their boxers. Um, that <laughs> that's the thing yeah. in US where mm. you, you're sagging your pants, right? Yeah. I didn't understand mm. coming from Korea. Like, why why are these guys? Mm. They have do the pants not fit them? Mm. Um, I, and they they would say that's a cool thing to do, but I completely didn't understand why mm. you would sag your pants yeah. until. I wanted to be cool just like them. I wanted to fit in. So I had to change my appearance. Mm -hmm. I need I needed to change the way I talk. I cussed every single word. Mm -hmm. And I changed, um, I had changed. I was more of a wannabe gangster. So I had mm -hmm. a lar extra large t-shirts, um, mm -hmm. wearing certain colors, uh, wear my tints and Air Forces and have a hat and bandana. So I, I look completely different than now, but wow. I hung around with a lot of gangsters, uh, druggies, and mm. wanting to be popular almost uh, because I felt like I didn't fit in. Mm. I didn't want to make be made fun of. Mm. So that was a change and I had to adopt myself uh, to fit in. Wow. Wow. So uh, how was those struggles? I mean, I know you you told me about, you know, hang out with the wrong people, right? Uh, uh, you want to fit in and everything. And I would just have this question. Um, uh, you were Christian in that time or, or, or not um, yet? A good question, because I was going to church, but yet I went because my family went. I had no relationship with God. Mm. I really went for two things, basketball. Oh, actually three basketball music and um, girls mm -hmm. those are the three main things and to be honest that's all i cared about at the time yeah. going to church um, i could care less about the bible i could care less about the pastor what yeah. they say prayer all this stuff but eventually it's i realized religion without personal relationship is like eating without having taste mm. so i would go and and it may be fun uh, right of good people and you could have you could actually make certain friends um and sometimes you you can be yourself as well but when i when you don't have that personal relationship with god it's like eating without any taste like you don't get to taste the true all these different flavors you could have mm. with god Amen. and especially talking about life like i didn't know what it means to be living with god and i think that's why my life became very uh, routine based mundane uh boring mm. and even to a point meaningless wow meaningless uh, interesting uh it was difficult to learn english <laughs> oh definitely it was difficult mm. one of the hardest languages out there i think no right? offense to anyone, See? but <laughs> I mean, I'm not the only <laughs> <It's>, one. <laughs> they have so many exceptions with grammar or 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 vocabulary, like the way you pronounce things. You just I'm That's still a learning. Big so. one. That's a big one because let me tell you, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, I can tell you a lot of things. But, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, yeah. in Spanish, I don't know if you're familiar with with, with Spanish, but uh, how you is you know is is written you know that's how you pronounce it and mm -hmm. i mean i don't Same. know in korea or something better here in the united states i mean in english you know it's, it's totally different you know like washington i mean if you want to pronounce it how is that i mean it's gonna <laughs> sound like washington or something like that i mean i don't know <laughs> <laughs> 
I mean, seriously, I mean, it's, it's very hard. I mean, you need to like really listen and, and, and just how the, the pronunciation, you know, if you don't pronounce it right, I mean, they like, you know, you're, you're exactly. different and stuff like that. And of course, you know, thanks God for good people and Christian people or something like that. They, they I mean, they're kind of like, Hey, yeah. don't worry. You know, let's, let's be friends and stuff. But some people like, wow, but, uh, uh mm. yeah. Right. I mean, I'm not the only one, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And I think mm -hmm. uh, because of that, too, I had a lot of uh, insecurities mm -hmm. uh, coming into this new land with new language and people always making fun of you, the way you dress, the way you talk, mm -hmm. being a fob, which means fresh off the boat, mm -hmm. someone who just came from another country who didn't fit in. Uh, I really had to change myself to fit in. And um, I think that kind of carried over to the way I do things mm -hmm. where uh, because I wanted to fit in, I became the bully. I wanted to be popular. So I wanted to, you know, mm -hmm. present myself a certain way, mm -hmm. um, being a gangster like uh, cussing around and being tough, mm -hmm. uh, at least looking tough. And I think all those things really attributed to me being insecure about who I am me being insecure about and being maybe even embarrassed mm. about um, being transparent with who I am. And maybe if people found out who I am really, then they're not going to like me. They're going to make fun of me. But it, it's, it's, a, it's a complete change now because I, one of the first things I tell people, even uh, at me as a leader with you know people I'm leading and things, I tell them I'm weird. And the true weirdest people are people who don't think they're weird. So I, I say I'm weird from the beginning. Mm -hmm. We all have quirks and that's completely fine. Mm -hmm. And I, I would like to just be that unique person. And I think that journey to win that kind of mindset or have that mindset was when I started with that martial arts. So uh, there's a martial art called Taekwondo and it's a Korean martial art and, and, there's actually an Olympic um, competition as well with that. Mm -hmm. And so when I had that meaningless life, um, well, feeling more like, you know, what am I really aiming for in this new country? Um, I was introduced to this martial art. Mm -hmm. And so when I got into it, I started giving my soul into this thing. I would practice four to six to seven, eight hours a single day exercising exercising and exercising to the point i throw up to the point that i'm so sore that i take ice baths every single night so that i could exercise more the next day wow. you know i just gave everything that i have towards this because i thought this is what i enjoy mm -hmm. and i felt accepted by the members there my master my grandmaster the team members they really took me in as their own son um and own family so i felt i belonged there and i had talent for it so um they even my grandmaster he was willing to give me a full scholarship to ucla so that i could continue practicing uh taekwondo mm -hmm. and eventually i you know i didn't get you know i i stepped away but i came to a spot point in my life where i gave my everything and within two years i had a black belt and i said you know, I'm going to be the best that I can be. And what is that? It's the gold medal in Olympics. Wow. And I started uh, competing in the national level. And this is right before uh, college. And so I had a whole career set before me, I felt um, that my life was set. I'm happy doing this. Uh, this is my purpose in life. I felt like I had a meaningful life. But a problem happened and I didn't foresee it as a problem in the beginning. It, it was when my mom remarried uh, to my stepfather, now stepfather, and he saw my life a little bit different than how I saw it. Mm. So being an Asian, uh, mm -hmm. obviously we have high expectations for the children to go to these IV leagues, become a doctor, lawyer. Um, that is the safe and the most profitable career, right? Yeah. Um, and so my father 
coming from a very rich family as well. He was very successful at one point, my stepfather. He, he saw a potential in me and he wanted me to go in the same line of, you know, you need to become the best in education and have that career. And so he asked me to stop Taekwondo and start focusing on study. And but that was as, your passion, right? Uh, I mean, that was your passion. Right. Getting up in the morning. I mean, taking a shower. You were saying like coach, you know, and, and so you can be more successful the next day. So this new guy, right? New guy <laughs> show up and it's like, now you want to just check the whole thing on my life. I mean, what's going on? I just kind of interested. What happened? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And um, like you said, my life was shaken, uh, completely out of place. But I didn't know it would that make that kind of impact. So I stopped because I wanted to respect my dad, my new dad, mm -hmm. and I wanted to respect my mom as well. I don't want any cause any trouble. Okay. So I said, okay, I'll stop. But then I quickly realized that was really everything for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, eventually I became very depressed. Um, uh, I cried over it almost every single night in the shower. Mm -hmm. I uh, didn't want to do anything in life. And um, I felt like I'm alone. I felt so dark. I felt lost mm -hmm. and that there was no meaning in life. And so um, I, I didn't have a direction. I, I didn't know what to live for. I didn't care about my own life. And so there was even a point where I, I went one night I was by myself at home. I went into the kitchen. I grabbed one of the kitchen knives uh -oh. and before I knew it, I held it up and, and I said, this is it. This is, I'm done. I don't, I don't care anymore. Mm. And it was then that, um, a pick a face of my mom came into my, 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 my mind. And, and, and I could, I just could not imagine myself, um, seeing the, the the desperate i guess the cries of my mother seeing her own boy dead on the ground when she comes back home wow. and you know she sacrificed so much for me that i just couldn't do it so i i let the i put the left down he, of course my parents didn't know about it mm. and i kept just kind of living saying um eventually saying if god if you are real and and they i didn't even know this was a prayer but at the time i would just say god if you're real if mm -hmm. there's such a thing as god in this universe mm -hmm. um talk to me give me give me something to live for wow. what i don't even know why i should be alive and so the question really is why am i living why am i living it's uh, as you can see where how, how I am now, he has answered that prayer. And, and I have to say, life in God's plan is meaningful, fulfilling, exciting, and it could even be remarkable. Because after I made that prayer, everything changed. Wow. Everything. <laughs> I, I, I want to hear it because let me tell you, I have another question. I have a question right now. Uh, I don't know what is the good thing to say, but do you think why you were depressed? I know it's something like you really love. I mean, it can be anything, right? I mean, it's not just like uh, uh, martial arts. But it's, right. it, I mean, it can be a, a girlfriend. It can be, you know, a job. It can be a career or anything. But you were to that point that you were so desperate and depressed that you want to take your own life. I mean, that yeah. is like, like a lot of people, you know, you can hear like you, you touch bottom, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that was your moment or like you were like way down and, yeah. and, and, and you had, I mean, the Holy Spirit, you know, God, it was just showing to you like, Hey son, don't do this, you know? And, and. Oh, wow. I mean, I mean, thanks God you didn't because, uh, you know, later on, we're going to find out. I mean, I'm, I'm sure, you know, we're going to find out that how God, you know, protect you, bless you. And, and, you know, because it's a, it's a, it's a, 
uh, we still we're still running right in that in that in the, uh, uh, in this kind of life of to be a Christian right uh, but right. Uh, with Christ we can be you know triumphant exactly and mm-hmm. I think uh, there are so many people going through depression um, in this world uh, and uh, they're asking the same questions why is it that I want to live at all mm-hmm. um, Maybe they've lost a loved one uh, that they, they deeply cared about. Maybe they couldn't do what they wanted to do. And that was me. I, I felt, and it it sounds very selfish if I look back, where I got depressed because I couldn't do what I wanted to do most. Mm. And that felt like I then I have no reason to live for anything. Mm. Uh, that was my everything. and And sometimes... It takes us to go to the rock bottom, Mm -hmm. the deepest bottom, um, surrendering everything where you could finally hear God. That that God is has He's been seeking after you, but you've been so caught up with whatever you wanted to do, Mm -hmm. whatever you wanted to have, that until you lose that, you don't hear Him, or you you pass Him by. That can be a little scary. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So it, it definitely was when I hit that rock bottom. Mm-hmm. Um and that it 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 was it felt better to die than to live. Mm-hmm. And so at that point, I think for me, I didn't know that you could have happiness fulfillment and and even incredible experiences that life brings mm-hmm. um all those things were kind of it felt unreachable or it felt that it was not for me or it felt that um there was no such a thing because i feel so miserable mm-hmm. but i'm telling you that it was just a step away that you we it's just a, a, a one step away from you reaching the ha- true happiness and fulfillment in your life. Mm. And the way it happened for me was I went, to, just like any old day, I, I went to one of my English class in high school. Okay. And when I went, of course, I was depressed. Um, there was this club that came into our class to um ask for funds mm. and this was more of like a um more like a nonprofit club where they wanted to build a well in ethiopia mm. by collecting pennies so oh. they're collecting a little you know money from the students and saying we want to help uh those developing countries and one of them was ethiopia mm-hmm. and because they didn't have water uh, clean water in ethiopia they wanted to build a well and so I didn't care much of it in the beginning, but they started showing uh, pictures of Ethiopia. And as you can imagine, of course, those pictures are very sad and yes. kind of depressing. Mm-hmm. But there's this one picture that I could still remember to this day. It's a little boy sitting down completely naked with his belly out. Um, of course, he's his skin is, you know, there's no fat in his arms because he's so, he's starving. And there are flies all around him. And this boy is staring straight at the camera. And when I saw that picture, something hit me. Mm. Now I could say it was God, almost that Holy Spirit speaking to me in a very still small voice saying, Mm. Stephen, look at this boy. This boy is born just to die in several months. This boy has nothing. He can't, he doesn't have enough food. He has no education. He may not even have a family to go back to. He really has nothing and is born just really going to die in several months. Mm -hmm. But look at you. You have a roof over your head. You eat well. Even though we are a poor family, you have everything you need. You even have education. You have possible endless possibilities with what you have. Mm. So how can you be so depressed and sad that you can't do what you want to do when there are children or people out there like that? Mm. And it was then that we really clicked and almost God saying to me, Stephen, I want you to live for those people who have no hope. Mm. 
Give hope to the hopeless. Mm. Live for them who has less than you. And that's when things started to turn around. My perspective changed. And I said, I want to give my all to God. I want to give my all to these people. I want to help as much people as I can with th the things that I can do. Mm. So God saw what I needed, even beyond what I could see that I needed. He understood my desires that I wanted to live for something great. And I wanted to do my best. Mm -hmm. And that ultimately, he wanted my happiness. Mm -hmm. And so he revealed the direction that I needed to go and give, gave me the burden that I care for. And ultimately, this really showed my value in Christ. Hmm. And like I said in the beginning, this I think has helped me to um, really come out of my insecurities as well. Hmm. By knowing God more and more and what he has for me, like I'm not worthy to take on that kind of mission. <laughs> like who am I to help? <laughs> I mean, I mean, seriously, I was just thinking about grace, you know, I mean, I, I mean, I interview a lot of people here, you know, thanks God, you know, people want to share the testimony and stuff like that. But seriously, everything goes to the grace. Everything is, is, is like, you know, I'm not worthy, but God, he was there to help me out, to, you know, to bless me with this, to, I was so addicted to this, or I was this, you know, and seriously, I mean, we're not worthy, you know, but when we, when we come to find, hmm the love of God that he cares about us. And, and, and let me tell you, uh, you guys that are watching right now. I just want to tell you guys, uh, please like this video. I mean, help us out, like the video. This video right now is live here in Facebook, but this video is going to be available next week in our YouTube channel. And I just want to share with you guys, uh, here in just be blessed. Uh, uh uh, I interview people and they share their testimonies. Please uh, give us some love. Uh, go and just be blessed on YouTube. Uh, and this, uh, this interview with uh, Brother Steven is going to be next week available. And, but we're going to find out more because we in the middle of this, how God is a personal God with Brother Steven. So let's go back. All right, brother. And uh, seriously, I mean, God is a personal God because, I mean, you weren't there. I mean, it's God who was talking to you through this picture. I mean, powerful scenes, right? Powerful scene. Yeah. And it's that recognition, like Philippians 4, 19, it says, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. And when we look at this verse, it's not just materialistic things. It even means emotional needs, spiritual needs. Uh, for me, I needed a, a purpose in my life in order to keep going because everything felt like it was not worth uh, trying. Um, I didn't want money at the time. I was a young child. I, I could care less about money. And so riches weren't really what I was aiming for. Um, it wasn't many other things, but I, I needed a purpose and God was able to show that to me in ways that I would have never thought, but he reached out to me when I just needed personally. And so I, I, I really want to ask our viewers here, friends, pray in desperate need. You know, when you are in need, it is okay for you to come honestly, you know, with, without any, any, um, I guess, a facade or more so any um, hesitance, come to God mm. and say, I am in need. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, just like a father for a little child who comes home and say, Father, I need this. A father will be willing to provide anything that you desire, really. Um, any, everything that, of course, is safe for you and something that will make you happy. But he he's willing to give it just we need to take time to just speak to him saying, be, be completely honest and be like, Lord, I'm going through this. I don't know what it means or, or I'm, I'm troubled or I don't see the way out, but I need, I need this. I need you. Mm -hmm. And he will come to your aid without yeah. a doubt. Yeah, totally. Because 
Uh, I'm gonna share this with you, uh, with, with you guys. Uh, it was a couple of days ago. I had my, my devotion in the morning, and my devotion was talking about uh, how important is about asking God for you know. Not we talk about things or stuff like that, but I asking God. I mean, uh, if this is your will, I mean, do do you want me to get this card? Do you want me to go forward? You know, go forward to you know for this engagement and study or, or anything i mean is uh the thing is that like you were saying i mean do you think our heavenly father can i give us you know the bread i mean he's not gonna give you serpents you know or or, or, or rocks i mean they give you bread you know and, you know things like that but the thing is that and, and my devotion was saying that even those people they're christians in the end times or they gotta be lost or they're gonna be perished because they didn't ask. Mm. I mean, interesting. I mean, right. because you know, you were saying like the Holy Spirit. You hear the the voice of God, the Holy Spirit, and stuff like that. And it's it's like we don't ask. Like God, do you want me to buy this house? Do you want me? You know, I want to do my will. You know, <laughs> like I like that car. I'm gonna do it. You know, I have the money or I have the credit or whatever. But the thing is that when we go humble, that's what my devotion was saying that. We say, Lord, do you want me to take right or do you want me to take left? Mm. You know, things like that. And it's when when the Lord is pleasing you, like, oh, my child, my daughter is asking me. Oh, yes. here he goes. You know what I'm saying? But the thing is this, like I say, you know, we're so busy or we just want to do ourselves. And, and look at what happened, right? But I just want to share that with you. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, and it's funny you say um, buying a house. I'm actually in the process of uh, looking for a house to buy. And, you know, um, it could be a daunting task, uh, especially all my family growing up poor. We never even think about owning our own home. Right. Yeah. But now God has really brought me so far and, and I'm able to come to this decision of buying a house. And mm -hmm. and there's something that I'm learning more about, which is if as you're looking for these houses mm -hmm. if the house is really to glorify god mm -hmm. why wouldn't he give it to you mm -hmm. so in the sense of how we're thinking me and my wife felicia mm -hmm. we we are thinking of making this place a refuge for many of the other young couples or even married couples mm -hmm. um we understand how marriage could be uh, difficult. We understand their communication problems that can occur, or even as a single person, how to prepare themselves for something as important as marriage. Mm -hmm. And we recognizing that we wanted to make our home a place of like sanctuary where people can come and learn and, and, and we'll take them through like some of the things that we have learned mm -hmm. and also give them an experience outside in, in more of a secluded private area. So um, that's some, a vision we had. And we said, you know, this is something that God will be happy to do. Mm -hmm. So if it's something that he's happy to do and we want to do it as well, mm -hmm. why wouldn't he provide a way to do it? Yeah. And so we felt a little bit more. I guess, calm and reassured that as we're making these steps forward, that he's going to provide things that we would need to make it happen. And, you know, sometimes uh, with all this said, like we ask and he will give, right? Mm -hmm. it, it's, it sometimes, it, it just takes sacrifices mm -hmm. and, and, and mm -hmm. there are steps to take. Now, what's great is that God could have told me, Stephen, if you want to know your purpose, you have to do 100 push-ups. You have to um, um, earn $200,000 in a year or something um, with your hands. Or um, you have to talk to someone. He could have had a list of tasks that I need to accomplish yes. if I were to gain what I'm desiring. Go to your knees all the way to L.A. Right. Anyway. That's horrible. Yeah. Um, or be stuck in traffic in LA. That's horrible too. <laughs> but um, the, mm. you know, the crazy thing about God, our God, our Father, is that He doesn't ask any of those things. Really, there was it's nothing true. stopping me from knowing my will or mm. God's will. 
I didn't do anything. I was simply doing what I do every day, go to school, mm. go to my English class, and then sit there and listen to whoever has to say, you know, the lecture or whatever. Yeah. And, and that's when it clicked. God didn't ask anything crazy of me to do. Mm -hmm. He simply met me where I was. And I think a lot of times we, we are afraid to ask because we're afraid that he's asking you to do something you can't do. Mm -hmm. If it's something you can't do, he's going to do it. <laughs> and that's, it's that simple. Yeah. So, um, we have to, I think, have that mind of more like a child and be like, simply ask. And that's all you may, it, it takes really. And being willing to receive what he has for you. And another and thing, so, uh, and, the, and, yeah. and, 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 and the book of Revelation, I was just talking about, you know, like, uh, ask and just wait, right? Like, like wait, you know, and the word patient just show up in my mind right now. And in the book, in the book of Revelation, I believe is uh, Revelation chapter 12. Maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> it says the patient of the saints is those who keep the, you know, the, the, the commandments of God and they have the faith of Jesus. So, I mean, mm -hmm. in the end times, I, you know, we talk about patient. I don't know why I'm bringing this, but it, it's, it's patient. I mean, sometimes we want the answer right now or, or like, come on, God. I mean, you can do it. You're God, right? I mean, but yeah, but the patient, that's the key. Uh, I mean, for the end times, I mean, you know, the book of Revelations for the end times. So, uh, you know, so I just want to, sh you know, share I, this. That I know. read a book and, it, and the author says, just because your prayer is delayed, it doesn't mean that it's declined. Oh. Uh, you know uh, what I mean? It's so powerful. I mean, yeah, it's very beautiful. Yeah. Powerful. So mm -hmm. like that, that switch for me when I realized my purpose in life and what God revealed to me that I have a greater purpose, something much more meaningful. He, like I said, that small step mm -hmm. and all it took was me willing to take that step. I didn't know what I was going to be doing 10 years from then, but he completely turned my life around where <laughs> just to say everything that has happened ever since then it's been about 11 years um i can't put all those things in words for the time we have but some of the things that he he has helped me to become you know i never went to university and and i'm not ashamed to say it because the best way that god was telling me to go wasn't in that direction mm -hmm. and so he had a better plan for me uh, for what i was called to do and so i went full-time ministry and when i went full-time ministry i didn't know what i was going to be doing mm -hmm. my parents actually kind of disowned me and then they threatened me saying you know i don't want you to be living that kind of life um i i don't agree with how you're going to live but you know i knew for sure this was the way that god was leading so i i took a step of faith and, and risked everything my future uh, my education and and so, all those things so you 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 send the uh Okay, you decided to go to full time ministry, and your parents said, "This is not okay, boy." Exactly. Right? Exactly. Wow. I mean, I wish I could, my, my daughter told me, "Say, you know what, mom, dad? I mean, I would like to do ministry." I mean, it's like, what? Praise the Lord! <laughs> kind of like that. But uh, your situation was backwards, man. Yeah, I think they were scared. They were scared. Okay. They put so much effort and time into me and they had great expectations. But yet, mm -hmm. what is this? Ministry life is not an easy life. You're going to you're going to struggle financially. You're not yes. going to have anything. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of woman would want to be with you? So they had so many things uh, against me, mm -hmm. but I was so sure this was God. And I said, I have to go mm -hmm. regardless of what you are saying. And so for the first time in my life, there was that they could see it as a rebellion in their minds, mm. but um, for them, I actually went against what they wanted me to do. And, and because I was so clear that this was the way God was leading me mm. and their reasons were not according to what God was saying. It was more so um, a lot of times it was really selfishness of my dad um, wanting me to become someone great and, or doing what he wants me to do. And so, as I took that step, our, our relationship became um, bad, but God was teaching me how to grow myself 
whether it's my insecurities, becoming a man in, in, in a godly way mm-hmm. and where I could actually have plans for my life through him and being able to now, after many years, come back to my family and say, this is what God was able to do and show them how God Only he could have done this. This wasn't me. This wasn't you. This wasn't some education. This was completely what God and him only was able to do. Where someone without an education, I became an expert in marketing uh, and branding. Mm -hmm. So, And I became a leader in so many ways where I helped um, thousands, literally thousands of people uh, around the globe, um, helping them lead their lives. And eventually even me being able to go to Ethiopia and minister to so many people there, showing them the ways uh, to Christ and even helping them in, in, in their daily necessities, yeah. um, things like that. Just God started pouring ways for me to have an extraordinary life, mm. a remarkable life where it's an adventure that I would have never imagined. And so, and that is with, you know, I didn't have everything stable at first. Uh, financially, I was literally, you know, going month by month and, and God somehow would provide for me. And of course, as you are getting older, you start to think about, man, what am I going to do um, about this finance? And, and I kept in contact with my mom. So she would always tell me, Stephen, it's not still too late to go to college, get a degree. You could get a, a career, you could get a job. And, and I said, well, if that is what God wants me to do, he will lead me and, and I'm willing to do it, but it just has to be clear. Yeah. But eventually God had other plans. Now, you know, he provided me the best job I could have so far. I even had businesses that I started and, and willing to prove to my, my own family, mm-hmm. God took care of me. Mm-hmm. Um, he given me a more meaningful, fulfilling, exciting mm-hmm. life mm-hmm. and still have a future, mm-hmm. have a beautiful wife yeah. that, that I would not otherwise able to have, to have yeah. more than what I could ask for. Even my mom now telling me that he, she saw true Christianity mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. me that she couldn't see any other where. And she respects me. She asks me for prayer whenever she's in need. She comes to me um, for counsel in life. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm a, just a young person. What do I know? But she saw some wisdom somehow in the way that I speak Amen. to her. That's right. Yeah. 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 So yeah. eventually, God, you know, and that's why I said it was all God. Like, mm-hmm. that's something that I, I don't think I could have done. Mm-hmm myself uh, mm-hmm. this type of life is not something i made up mm-hmm. it really is something that god made a way and so in my mind it's like life in god life in god's plan is meaningful can be meaningful is fulfilling it's exciting it's remarkable and i believe as long anyone who's willing to take that step it can have such life and I'm telling you, I never regretted it once, no matter what I had to go through. There was not even a single moment in my life that I said, what if I would have done something else? What if it would have been better somewhere else? But no, God truly makes the best plans for us. So all I can really ask is pray. Like really, if you get anything, whatever situation you're in, God is made, able to make the way out of it. And he has greater plans. He has something better. So pray in those desperate times of need and come honestly to him. And he will make a way. He will provide. Amen. Amen. And he will reach out to you. Yeah. 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 Totally. I think, I think it's so powerful uh, just, you know, to be humble and also to, you know, have patience. We talk about patience. We talk about, uh, you know, just to, just to say, here I am, Lord, right? Because you didn't know the future. You didn't know that uh, 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 the, you just want to serve. You just want to be close more to God and ministry, you know what I'm saying? Not knowing, you know, it's going to be 10, 11 years, you know, that, uh, 
I'm going to be in ministry. I mean, I don't know if I'm going to be making tons of money or not, whatever. But they give you all those uh, nice, um, you know, opportunities, you can say, you know, but the trust in the Lord. Um, can you imagine you didn't go in ministry or whatever? I mean, uh, meeting uh, Sister Felicia, you know, in ministry. You guys work together, right? Or something like that. Yeah, that's even an amazing thing. I yeah. met her. We are in the same line industry of working, mm -hmm. doing full time ministry, mm -hmm. and we work in the same company now. Mm -hmm. And and who would have thought like we could we she's we could work in the same room at home doing yeah. all these ministry. Great stuff. ideas, bring more ideas to the table, right? I mean, I mean, I think it's excited. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I think it's so excited. Yeah. Uh, uh, how the Lord, you, uh, you know, work with you guys and, and, and put it, this thing together and the, the future uh, plans that you guys have, you know, asking the Lord, hey, do you want us to get this house? We want just, not just for us to enjoy, you know, but it's like uh, to be a sanctuary. I like the word, to be a sanctuary, to bring more other couples to learn about marriage and, you know, advice and, you know one topic? I mean, this is life and I'm going to share. <laughs> uh, uh, that'd be so awesome. Uh, I don't know if you guys have this plan, but, uh, you know, before marriage, and I believe, you know, to be a, you know, uh, you know, some advice for those people that they just become boyfriend, girlfriend, you know, and mm. I don't know in, in, in South Korea, but in Mexico, you know, it's kind of like you 12, 13 is, oh, let's go find some girlfriend, you know, some mm. boyfriend, the little girls, you know, I mean, now it's, you know, how old time is, but it's, it's so important to me, uh, learning, you know, I'm going to be 20 years being married and, you know, I have two beautiful girls. So I'm kind of like, looking Amen. For, thank you. <laughs> so I've been looking for, you know, uh, some ministries or some couple or, or something like that, you know, they share like. You know, it's time to. It's, it's good to wait. You know, or, or, or what is the advice? Uh, of, or, or what is the the perfect time to have a boyfriend girlfriend? You know, because let me tell you, I mean, when you get married, I mean, you have twenty and you list bef before the one. You know, I mean, why you need yeah. to just have those twenty? You know, might as well just wait. You know, so I just wondering if I don't know if he's one of your plants. Or maybe I can just, just give you that one. <laughs> you know, it, it'd be so <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I mean, to work with that, you know, just know where to better, to have a better marriage. But it kind of like all the people that kind of like, what is the perfect time to 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 have that, that, that friendship, you know? And, 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 right. And, Brother, yeah. that's a great suggestion. And, and, and it really goes aligned with what we mm. wanted because um, another side of me is, uh, how to be a man that is prepared for taking care of a woman and me growing up I, under a single mother i and i had no real dad figure or father figure to look at i didn't know what it means to be a man i thought you have to be strong i thought you have to just you know lay down the law and what are you watching tv in the movies i want to be like you know bruce yeah. lee you know i'm gonna right. be like you know Sylvester yeah. salon you know or, <laughs> i mean i don't know exactly or even like Homer Simpson or all these, mm. you know, cartoons like Peter Gr right. um, um, Peter Griffin. Like those are the examples of our manhood. Like I, th that's that's what I grew up watching. So mm. in my mind, you know, I have a certain perspective of a man, and I realize it's not about that. It, it really is completely different. And I failed so many relationships because I mm. thought that was the way. Yeah. Um, messing around with so many girls, sleeping around and doing things that I, I would have never, you know, thought it was wrong to do at the time. Mm -hmm. But now I realize going through all those mistakes, that's a whole nother part of, you know, making, you know, God sharing and, and educating and training me to be where I am now, where this whole emotional and, and uh, social side of being a man and knowing what it means to be a man. Uh, how I could, what, what is my role? What are my duties that is different from a woman? And as a, a husband, how can I lead my home in the right direction? And I think that is um, something that a lot of the men out there don't know. 
And I think we need to share more of that and become like a more of a community, helping each other understand uh, what it means to be that person. Love it. Yeah, it's, I, I think it's great. Community, that, that's great because, you know, sometimes we need, you know, a little help, you know, a little like, hey, how are you guys doing, man? I mean, just like a men talk or, you know, even like a woman talk, you know, stuff like that, and, and just kind of help each other, you know, just to build up our faith. Uh, because, you know, we're living in the, <laughs> I know it's not, not talk about prophecy here or, or like, you know, stuff, stuff that we watch on TV, you know, what's going on in the world. But uh, we live in the in a, in a crazy, crazy times, you know, and, yeah. and what much better to to help us in our relationship with our wives, relationship with uh, friendships, you know, and come to know. And, and yeah, because that's that's a, a huge needed, you know. Exactly, exactly. And and like you said, living in these end times, you see the world going crazy. And I think mm -hmm. this is when true manly figures in God has to show because community, the society of the world is made by families. Mm -hmm. And if we fail as a man in our own family, mm -hmm. how can we succeed in anything else? That's the closest thing to us. Yeah. And there's no other way to make that up. Like if you fail with your family, how can you make that? Up? Who can make that up for you? Mm -hmm. There's no one yeah. because that is your family. And so yeah. I, I definitely see need in having more godly men out mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. so that really we could prepare for the coming of christ yeah yeah totally and wow it's excited it's excited you know talking uh um yeah wow i have this question i forgot <laughs> oh okay this is life no um, uh yeah it's so needed thank you thank you for sharing uh I have two, two more questions. I don't know if you have more, but uh, I have the, uh, two more questions to ask you. No problem. Okay. Uh, one is uh, uh, how how God changed your life, and also uh, you. Sh I mean, how 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 God changed your life? Seriously. How caught it? Of course, you know, there's part of that, my testimony, but it's also, um, I think one of the most important thing is how my mom saw me mm. uh, changed. Yeah. Amen. So it's not just how I see myself change, mm -hmm. but having that affirmation, affirmation from others, mm -hmm. especially the closest one to you who knows all the, the bad things about you, who knows your, you know, character and what, mm -hmm. what buttons to press you know things like that i of course failed many times even after being a true christian mm -hmm. but he she she really saw that change and i think to put it simply is whatever god tells you just do it <laughs> mm -hmm. just just don't think about if you can't do it just don't think about how hard it is to do it being able to just be like you know what I'm going to make that step. God, here I am. Like I said before, mm. change me. And, and that came through also with uh, my marriage. And mm. there was a time where mm -hmm. we, we kind of went through this back and forth. Um, you could call it an argument. Mm -hmm. And she was expressing a lot of the things that um, I've done that made her feel um, bad or feel certain way. Now, when I hear something like that, I could take it as a criticism and start defending myself, which I easily do. I could defend every single thing that the person points out mm -hmm. and give a reason why I do it. But remember, that's not what they're looking for. And, and, and I caught that quickly. That's when a woman tells you, this is wrong with you, this is wrong with you, you know, why can't you do this? It's not really to disrespect you or to put you down. Mm. It's her desire to make you better. Mm. So instead of taking that personally, I was trying to listen beyond what she's saying. Um, yes, she's saying all this and I could argue back and forth and defend myself. But instead, I would simply understand and try to hear what is she trying to say? And so for her, she was feeling hurt because the way I was acting and 
And by noticing that, I'm able to address that instead of what she was immediately or telling me that there was something wrong. And and this took a lot of me. Like I really had to pray because mm-hmm. that's not natural for me to do so. It's natural for me to fight back. Mm-hmm. But I said, you know what? Let those things she said come in and God is able to take care of that. And I, and I have no worries about it. So he's going to take it in mm-hmm. and let him take the hit <laughs> mm-hmm. more so because he's my dad. Uh, he's my big brother, you know, Christ. You know, but at the same time, God, how can I... Um, make her feel loved at this point because she's saying that because she's hurt. Mm. And so instead of addressing that, I started to talk and more address about her, the root issues of why she, how she felt Mm. instead. And that was all God, like that change did not happen because of how smart I was or how how much I was reading. Mm. It really was, God was telling me to, Hey, this is a time for you to be humble right now Mm. and simply listen. You will listen and just do it right (laughs) yes yes totally Uh, exactly please share with us you your favorite verse in the bible i'm sure you have many but share with us you yes you know uh it doesn't need to be memorized you know you just you can search (laughs) yeah i don't have a favorite verse yeah. So it depends on my, what I'm going through, Okay. but, um, I think this verse really, uh, sums up, um, what I think would help a lot of people there. So it's in Colossians 1, 26 through 29. Mm-hmm. And it says, even the mystery, which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints to whom God would make known. What is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, Mm -hmm. which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, whom we preach, warn every man and teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus, whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. And why I like this is that God wants you to be perfect, right? Mm -hmm. There's this uh, perfection that God wants us to have. Perfection in a way that we are full of love and nothing less. And and this perfection, how can this happen? It is through Christ that is in you. Mm -hmm. So by seeing this, to me, it makes such a difference that there's so much value in who I am. The glory of Christ is in you. You can be perfect. You can, every man perfect in Christ Jesus. That we could go out and share this this Christ with others so that they may also come to this knowledge and, and experience of the remarkable, meaningful life. That's what I think God wants all of us to experience starting today. And I always say this, heaven can start now. Thank you so much. You know, thank you for for sharing. Uh, Please don't hang up. I'm going to finish this video, okay? No problem. All right. All right, you guys. I hope you were blessed, you know, with Brother Stephen Lee here in Just Be Blessed, sharing his testimony and how he went through coming from another country here in the United States and the struggles, you know, new language, having friends. But let me tell you, it was very hard in his life. The depression, depression was in his life. And, and, and but God, it was so personal that, I mean, yeah, it, 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 it was great. Thank you so much for uh, brother for being here. And you guys that are watching this, uh, please share this link. Go check it out uh, our YouTube channel. Lots of stories. Uh, share this link. Thank you so much for your support. And my name is Alex Castillejos here in Just Be Blessed, where we share people's testimonies and uplifting messages and how God is good.